and, and doping that you uh, speak of uh, more conventional material silicon. <clears throat> So my project this semester was to study the pro uh, study charge transfer in a heated PN junction. So uh, to start off, I have a diagram here that kind of shows you how the photo uh, what the photovoltaic effect is. So if you have a PN junction, what can happen is a photon can come in and excite um, an electron in an occupied silicon orbital up to an unoccupied state, and a previously unoccupied state and that leaves a hole behind and uh, through non-radiative processes that electron can decay down into the uh, in this case a phosphorus atom which is an endopent and the hole that was left behind can transfer over to the aluminum or p-dopant and uh, so that's pretty much what I'm trying to see uh, with my study <coughs> to see some sort of indication that there's transfer um, of charge negative electrons over to the endopant. Um, and these, to start off with, I had four different models. Um, up in the top left here is undoped silicon. Over here I have just a p-doped model. There's four uh, aluminum atoms uh, throughout the structure. Um, down here I have uh, an endoped model uh, for phosphorus atoms and down here is the PN junction um, that has two aluminum atoms in the middle and one phosphorus atom on either end and I calculated the property uh, the electrical properties using a density functional theory as implemented by the VASP software package um, basically it just solves a set of Concham equations uh, for the or Concham orbitals and their corresponding energies and once you have those, you can calculate the density, total energy, um, orbital absorption spectra, and density of space. Um, so before I heated the PN junction, um, I calculated all of uh, the density of states and absorption for all four models. Um, again, uh, this diagram in the top left is the undoped silicon, and then you have the uh, p-doped, n-doped, and the uh, co-doped model, which is kind of blocked. I'm sorry about that. Um, but you can see that there's a, a band gap in each of the models, which is uh, pretty, it's what I wanted to see. Um, showed me that nothing terrible went wrong. And in the case of the p-doped, there's some empty valence band states. And in the case of the, um, in the case of the endoped model, there's some occupied states in the conduction band, which again is what I'd expect. And you can notice that the band gap tends to decrease when you dope it, which is also what you would expect. And here I have the absorption spectra. Um, these seem to agree well with the density of states that I just showed you. Um, there's no transitions at energies where um, transitions would be forget forbidden due to the band gap. And, uh, peaks correspond to what appear to be uh, permissible transitions also um, from the density of states. And here I have visualizations of the orbitals, um, of the frontier orbitals. Um, in this picture, the red represents the HOMO and the blue represents the LUMO. As you can see in the undoped model, um, the orbitals are unlocalized. They're spread out throughout the entire structure. Um, you can see a similar thing with the p-doped model. It's not quite as smooth, but it doesn't seem to localize around any particular dopant. Um, then with the n-doped model, uh, you do see a little bit of uh, um, localization, probably due to the fact that there's occupied states in the conduction band. And then with the co-doped model, you can clearly see that the HOMO is localized around the aluminum atoms and uh, or the p-doped dopants and the LUMO is localized around the end dopants, which indicates uh, that charge transfer could take place um, going from the P side of the PN junction to the N side, which from what I told you earlier is what I was hoping would happen. <clears throat> and after that, I heated the just the PN junction and I ran molecular dynamics. Um, this plot right here is the um, just the temperature plotted as a function of time. 
there are some oscillations, but the fact that they all um, oscillate around an average of 1165 Kelvin indicates that it's in thermal equilibrium. And over here you have the density of states. Um, what's kind of odd about that is that um, there's unoccupied states in the valence band. Um, so in that sense, it looks kind of like what the um, p doped model looked like without any heating. And I'm not entirely sure how to explain that, but um, it's what I found. Um, and over here is the absorption spectra. Um, again, it seems to agree with uh, what I see in the density of states. A sharp peak up here that could occur due to transitions in here. And then, uh, there's lower, um, lower points that correspond to forbidden transitions, and then things kind of go up from there. And here I have a visualization of the orbitals um, of the PN junction after heating. Again, you can see that there's localization around that different dopants. But in this case, the HOMO is actually um, localized around the N dope, and the LUMO is localized around the P dope. Um, at first, I was not entirely sure how to explain that, but what I tried doing. Um, unfortunately, after I put the presentation together, was I looked at the uh, LUMO plus one and the HOMO minus one and plotted those orbitals. And what you see is actually the reverse of this. Um, the HOMO, like before, is um, localized around the P dope and the LUMO is lo localized around the N dope. So it could just be uh, that since the energies are pretty close to each other when you um, heat it, and run molecular dynamics, there's some kind of switching back and forth between um, the different energy levels. But between this and the fact that earlier there were empty valence band states kind of makes me want to uh, study this further and verify any of this. And to top it off, I have a, a video of the molecular dynamics. It shows that at the very least, at this temperature, the uh, PN junction doesn't want to blow up or fall apart. But that's all I have for you. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Our paper is open for discussion and questions. I can start uh, just to uh, warm up. So, in case you would have infinite bond. And you would have only one dopant, like phosphorus or aluminum. Uh, what is your intuitive, intuitive expectation or experience based on your simulation? Would orbitals contributed by these dopants localize only on the dopant atom in the tiny vicinity or delocalize uh, very broad? Um, I would think that they localize around any dopant. I, I think that they'd localize around a dopant, but... Um, How far do they uh, sit on the near uh, silicon atoms as well? Um, I'd say they probably sit near the, on the silicon atoms near the dopant as well. And what would determine how far they can protrude? Um, how many extra electrons, extra or electrons or um, holes the dopant has? So it would be Coulombic, Coulombic attraction. Yeah. Okay. More questions to Nathan? Yes. yes. So can you go to your figure with the absorption spectra at zero Kelvin for four cases, right? Show you. Absorption spectra for zero Kelvin? Mm -hmm. Okay. This one, I guess, yeah. So your, your, your first peak in the undoped system, right, is around, is more than 1.5 electron volts, yep. while the gap is less than 1 electron volt. Yep. So how can you explain this? Why your absorption spectra is much larger than your band gap? Um, so if you look here, the uh, absorption spectra depends not only on whether or not a transition is allowed, but also on the oscillator strength, or that, um, whether or not there's an open state for it to jump to, but also the oscillator strength. And no, the energy of your transition is exactly 
since you don't have any introduction of the Coulomb interaction between your electron and hole, then the energy of this jump from electron to hole state would be just the energy of your ground state orbitals occupied minus energy of the unoccupied orbital. That's it. So then it should completely correlate to your band gap, but it doesn't. So you're, you're, you're saying it's because... So um, you, you probably were on the right track. I think um, so I didn't really catch what exactly you were trying to say. So I was kind of pointing towards the oscillator strength. Um, so, so what happens with oscillator strength? Uh, it depends on the dipole moment and um, the dipole moment matrix elements and if those are forbidden. And so this low transitions, home aluma transitions are not optically active. Yes. Is it reasonable? Um, what do you know about silicon? Um, it doesn't seem completely unreasonable to me, but silicon is known that it's not really meeting light and